This classic love story, told in 85 verses in the four chapters of Ruth, is such a relief after the sad saga in Judges. As Graham Scroge writes, Ruth is like a lovely lily in a stagnant pool. Here, instead of unfaithfulness, is loyalty, and instead of immorality, is purity. Here, instead of battlefields, are harvest fields, and instead of the warrior's shout, is the gleaner's song. We see how God will bring blessing through the Jew to the Gentile, and then from the Gentile back to the Jews. This is God's great strategy discussed in Romans 11. What a plan! The story begins with a famine. Elimelech lives with his family in Bethlehem, which ironically means the house of bread. Elimelech, meaning my God is king, not submitting to God's discipline, takes his family down to Moab. Things don't get better for the family. Elimelech dies, then his two sons, but only after they had married two Moabite women. Not a bright start. Time passes. Then Naomi hears that the Lord has visited his people in giving them bread. It's time to go home. Her two daughters-in-law have a decision to make. Orpah wept, kissed Naomi, and turned back. But the older woman's entreaty did not convince Ruth. What follows is one of the most moving soliloquies in literature. So Naomi and Ruth head west across the Jordan, up through the Judean wilderness, then four miles south to Bethlehem. Is that Naomi, the villagers ask? No, she replies, call me Mara, meaning bitter, for the Lord has dealt bitterly with me. I went out full, I came home empty. Full, Naomi? I thought you left in the time of famine. Yes, but the worst days with the people of God are better than the best days in Moab. The theme of chapter one should be obvious. Ten times the word return is used. They arrived at the beginning of spring harvest when barley was being reaped. So in chapter two, the scene is a field, not any field, but one belonging to the richest man around, a kinsman of Naomi named Boaz. He notices Ruth gleaning and inquires who she is. In a conversation with her, he says, a full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel under whose wings you have come for refuge. This is remarkable because a Moabite was not to be received into Israel to 10 generations. Where had Boaz learned such grace? Matthew chapter one, verse five will be your clue. Chapter three provides a night scene at the threshing floor. There Ruth places herself under Boaz's skirt, the same word used for the wings of Jehovah where she had come to trust. But there's a nearer kinsman. Like the law, however, he couldn't redeem or he would mar his own inheritance. So Boaz, before 12 witnesses, pays the price and takes Ruth as his wife. There's no limited redemption here. Boaz redeems what was Orpah's too, if only she had come home. The result of the redeemer taking a Gentile bride is a baby named Obed, meaning worship. And 10 centuries later, through Gentile Ruth's lineage, God would again visit his people here by giving them the bread of heaven himself. Christ our Redeemer is presented by Matthew as the mighty man with the resources necessary, the working man who will not rest till he's finished the thing, as in Mark, the kinsman who is willing to pay the redemption price, as in Luke, and the loving man, as in John, who takes this Gentile to be his bride. And that's our scripture snapshot of the sweet little book of Ruth.